All right, so <clears throat> my name is John Kazala. I'm the uh, lead for the EDGE OCP project under the Telco project. Um, what I want to talk about today is the work that we've been doing to evolve the specification, the base specification. So um, what we've done is we've taken the work that was originally done and we're evolving it per some OCP recommendations on how we want to go ahead and make it more adaptable and more malleable for other use cases and applications. So what I'm going to present to you today was put together by some of my colleagues, Samuli and Lucas, and uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through what we're putting together. So previously, Nokia had contributed uh, our open edge chassis um, as sort of a base product line for the chassis component, as well as a 1U and 2U server sleds that sort of inspired the work that's going on now in the specification work in the OCP Edge project. Um, this was happening around 2018, and we also included the uh, open front hall gateway. And so what we wanted to do is kind of take that work, which was kind of designed for a kind of a specific use case, and make it more adaptable, make it more flexible and modular so that you know we can adapt that to other use cases. Because if you think about what we're trying to do, we, you know, we've basically um, disaggregated the RAN component tree and basically distributed it. So when you look at what's really happening, we're kind of ending up with a very distributed cloud and that sort of further out on the edge that we can go closer to the radio towers and whatnot, the less latency we can incur into the network and it opens up a whole new set of applications. So as you know, one of the requirements that we have is to be very um, concise and uh, particularly attention to heat, power, and space because as we kind of try to incorporate general computing technology into these what were traditionally, you know, very kind of appliance type applications, we're kind of putting on some new requirements into sort of the uh, traditional IT landscape, you know, things that kind of come from, you know, both the telecom space, things like NEBS and, um, you know, requirements for survivability and longevity, but then we're also constrained by the space that these things exist in. So, you know, this is not kind of your traditional, um, you know, data center. It's, you know, maybe a data center in a cabinet, Maybe it's a data center in a very small container because it's running, you know, perhaps maybe at an antenna site or, you know, something like along that type of uh, space dimension. So there's some very tight requirements that we need to kind of pay attention to. And so kind of taking what we've done and making this kind of more adaptable to some new use cases means that we can start to build these remote data centers out in kind of these remote locations that don't have a lot of space. Um, so what we've done kind of with the, the direction of the OCP team was to take you know, what we had kind of put together and build what we call a base specification. So the base specification is really a framework for people now to come in and innovate on top of. Um, you know, where traditionally before it was built kind of from some purpose-built needs from, from a uh, disaggregated brand perspective, you know, opening this up and allowing, you know, folks to innovate around that uh, framework can open up a whole new set of applications. So, um, when what we'll talk about later, and there's a, the next session after this, we'll talk about the sleds uh, and the work that we've done with uh, our partner ACES. But the sleds, you know, they include, they can now include things like, you know, not just the servers, but things like switches, peripherals, um, you know, even GPUs, for example. So what we're kind of seeing is this is all kind of being turned on its head. When we originally started, you know, the idea was is to reduce the power, to reduce the heat, to reduce the space, and really kind of come up with something concise. But, you know, what we're seeing is that a lot of these new applications, things like AI, ML, um, things like augmented reality, virtual reality, 
these now are kind of flipping that equation on its head on us, on us for a little bit. Um, you know, so where everything that has been being done up to this point was trying to reduce those things, now we're having to incorporate things like high-powered GPUs. You know, this is kind of used in cases where we want to now start to add intelligence into um, the RAN and basically use AI to help tune in real time what's happening. You know, for example, give you an example of this is, um, you know, you may want to have some intelligence in the RAN that can detect interference. You know, so you need to be able to detect that interference very quickly and adapt what's happening to work around that interference to kind of maintain, uh, you know, the best connection possible. So, you know, that's something that's extremely latency sensitive, but also needs some type of framework now to start to run other types of software, things that go beyond kind of what was in that appliance box model. Um, so at the same time, we're opening up kind of the platform now to a whole new set of these types of applications called X apps, where uh, third parties can now start to bring in and add on top of that. So we need a, a platform and a framework to allow for that to happen, you know, going beyond this, this uh, appliance model. So, you know, what was, was happening was that the original infrastructure is, you know, constrained, as I talked about, by this physical and environmental requirements. Um, so, you know, this is kind of built on, you know, what has traditionally been the, the NEBS specifications for those of you in the telecom world. Um, you know, so that's kind of the baseline to start with, but you know, as we move this out kind of into a more general computing environment as well as kind of into these constrained edge cases, it requires some things that go beyond what are kind of defined in NEBS, which was kind of designed for, you know, your traditional central office type environment. Um, so the specification supports a 19-inch relay rack with the standard rack unit mounting points. And it has a smaller spacing between the rows of equipment to address those small enclosures like I talked about. And you know, typically in these environments, you also have perhaps limited access, say, to the rear of the rack. And so there are some strong requirements to have um, things, say, front, um, front uh, serviceable in the rack itself. Um, you know, and then think too, in these environments, there's the need for extended temperature range and humidity range capabilities. So there's, you know, these are requirements that go beyond perhaps, you know, your traditional data, data center type uh, deployment. Um, also too, kind of coming from, you know, the classic NEBS environment is earthquake and any type of shaking, you know, depending on where these things could be. Um, you know, the goal is that it could be hard to service, hard to access, and so that's also part of the uh, set of requirements that go into this base specification. Um, and then finally, too, there's a requirement that these things have a long service life cycle. You know, doing a truck roll out to these environments may not be easy, it may be difficult, and so really what you want to have is something that has the ability to withstand some of these extremes and environment uh, as well as some type of high availability. So this is kind of what we've been putting together in this base specification um, to define what type of sleds can now fit into this chassis. And the goal is, is that this, this new base specification for the sleds is backward compatible with the previous generation, but it's more modular and open so that it can accommodate you know, some, some different types of use cases that, uh, you know, as we kind of move more of the traditional IT into these kind of edge deployments. So some of the uh, specifications that uh, are driven by what we put together here uh, are kind of listed in this table. So, you know, as you can see, there's uh, temperature requirements, uh, operating humidity, seismic tolerance, safety, fire resistance, EMC, EMI, acoustic noise, material conformity, and airborne contaminants. Also too, one of the key things that we've been driving is you know, really being conscious of energy and power utilization. So one of our key focuses is to look at you know, all kinds of different ways to reduce the energy and power that these things consume. Because as this gets built out, 
you know, there could be tens to hundreds of thousands of these elements out in the network to give the coverage that everyone expects that, that you know, we have in uh, you know, our cellular environment today. So on the physical specification side, the open edge sled must be compatible with that chassis specification. So we want to have that backward compatibility. The sleds are half width and two types are possible. So there's a 1U and a 2U. Uh, the sled base consists of a sheet metal tray with a maximum dimension of 212 millimeters um, with a handle and a height of 41 millimeters. The sled base must include a handle for a latching mechanism or an equivalent mechanical interface to allow the easy removal of the chassis of the mechanical, lock, mechanical locking, the sliding move, movement between the sled and the chassis. Uh, one other critical aspect from this point of view of the system operability is the location of a guide pin and backplane connectors. So uh, these retain their, their backroom compatibility. From an electrical and thermal requirement, the open edge sleds are powered by open edge, the open edge chassis through a backplane power connector. The chassis RMC is responsible for monitoring the power supply unit and backplane signals indicating the PSU status which are provided to the sled. The open edge sled design must allow the safe removal and insertion without us disturbing the rest of the system so it's hot pluggable. Um, the sleds have a, a normal voltage input of 12 volts and each sled must have its own independent cooling control. A sled must be able to operate at full specified capacity within these environments, and so we test that completely. Finally, the cooling control must adapt to the environmental conditions in a way that provides adequate cooling with a minimum of power consumption. The sled interface looks as follows. Um, on the front plate, there's an interface for the sled, which is uh, dependent on the type of application, so you can change that front plate around. There's a power connector, guiding pin, and backplane signal connector. From a hardware management perspective, the management is using the baseboard management controller circuitry for the service sled is A-speed AST2600, uh, or equivalent is recommended. Um, the BMC is a dedicated 16 gig gigabit ethernet LAN for communication with the RMC, and thermal sensors are also included. So a conclusion of moving forward, you know, the open edge provides this environment that um, allows for this new types of innovation. And it's designed with the consideration, you know, of, of these kind of new demands that we have in this environment. So, you know, we're kind of putting, I think, a lot of um, new requirements on some of the other groups in uh, the open compute project to be able to leverage the work that's being done. And, and bring that in. And I have another talk later on today that kind of talks about some of that. Just a real quick on what the product looks like. So on the far left there, this is the chassis. Uh, you next you see the, uh, the one U server. Um, and then in the top right there, you see the two U server. And then finally, the open edge front hall gateway. So, you know, I'd like to invite uh, you all, if anyone's interested, to join us on the um, EDGE community call. It happens the first Tuesday of every month. And um, one of the things that we have is our contributions. The link is shared there, as well as uh, products that comply with the specification. And we have a wiki with additional information. And uh, if you'd like to join us, or at least join the mailing list, that's also included. And with that, uh, I'll take any Thank questions. Thank you.